će nam se obratiti gospodin Don Markušić. Evo, Vigilara je ovo ljeto imao, imao jednu diplomatsku akciju, možemo je tako nazvati, kada smo reagirali na, na izjave ministra vanjskih poslova Republike Srbije, na izjave premijera, a bile su vezane za samo kardinala Stepinca. Tako da smo poslali jedno pismo. Potpisnici tog pisma bili su i naši učerašnji govornici, gospodin Heris i gospodin Markušić. Pismo je odaslano na, na srpsko, dakle, veleposlanstvo u obliku peticije, internetske peticije, kao i vladi Republike Srbije. A dopis upozorenja poslan je svim zastupnicima Evropske, Evropskog parlamenta, svim članovima Vijeća Europe i cijeloj Evropskoj komisiji. Tako da, smatrali smo izuzetno važnim skrenuti pažnju na neistine koje, se, koje dolaze iz naše susjedne zemlje, a vezano za kardinala Stepinca. Evo predstavio bi našeg prvog govornika, gospodin Don Markušić, hrvatski je poradnik iz Australije. Rođen je do duše u Zagrebu, ali je sa godinu i pol dana sa roditeljima otišao u Australiju i on je završio pravo i radio u struci. U Hrvatsku se vratio 96. godine kako bi pomogao zemlji u privlačenju stranih ulagača. Danas ima svoj vlastiti odvjetnički ured koji se bavi stranim ulaganjima te trgovačkim i korporativnim pravom. Praksu je pohađao u Engleskoj i Velsu, te postao prvi anglosaksonski odvjetnik koji je primljen u Hrvatsku odvjetničku komoru. Bivši predsjednik Američke gospodarske komore, a trenutno je podpredsjednik organizacije Transparency International Hrvatska, kao i predsjednik Azijsko-Pacifičke gospodarske komore, čiji je i osnivač. Naslov njegovog izlaganja je Stepinac, čovjek, ime i nacija s kojim se još uvijek manipulira. Evo, gospodine Markušić, izvodim. Um, ja bih samo tvoj reći da sam najviše ponosan što sam i počasni član udruge branitelja liječnika od PTSP-a iz Gline, jer su mi oni posobno obodali, kako to ove sve druge stvari su mi manje važne, to mi je najvažnije. Um, I would firstly like to thank uh, my fellow Wazi, Vice Batarello, for giving me this opportunity because it is indeed a great honor and privilege to be speaking to you today in defense of Cardinal Stepinac. Vice is ill and unable to see the fruits of his labor. He and his colleagues at Bigalare have done a sterling job in putting this magnificent conference together and he's in our thoughts and prayers during his convalescence and uh, it will soon make. It is a great honor and privilege to be on the same bill as Dr. Robin Harris and Dr. Igor Krishto, who are the foremost authorities in the fields, let alone on Stepinas. So this begs the question, why am I on the same bill as these eminent authorities talking about Stepinas? I'm actually here representing each and every one of you because I want to show you that private initiative is required by a voluntary organization and individuals in order to combat lies and deception. I will be talking about how three individuals took on a Serb government. I would like to say one, but there's still a lot of work to do. But at least we made a dent in their campaign against Cardinal Stepinac and Croatia for that matter. The title of my talk is Stepinac, a man, a name, a nation, still being manipulated. So it's not just about Stepinac, but our nation that is being manipulated. And it's not just being manipulated recently, or today, but still being manipulated since before the Communists took power, during and after they fell from power. In his opening chapter, entitled The Lie, Dr. Harris quotes Aloysius de Pinas, who said that communism was born of lies, lives by lies, and will die from lies. He goes on to say that, The strategy to vilify Stepinac, and with him the Catholic Church, 
was pursued deliberately, cunningly, persistently, and to a remarkable extent successfully by the Yugoslav Communist Party from before the partisans took power in 1945 up to the collapse of communist Yugoslavia in 1991. It overlapped with the desire within Serbian nationalist circles to achieve hegemony for a greater Serbia inside or finally outside the framework of a federal Yugoslavia. Sound familiar? Some of you, at least your parents, lived through the same thing not, not very long ago. And that project, as Stepinac himself well understood, meant that in practice, the Yugoslav Communist Party and elements within the Serbian Orthodox Church, which otherwise had nothing in common, share a joint goal. The other day, a taxi driver was telling me how, when he went to school, he was learning all about how Stepinac was a war criminal and enemy of the state, and he and many people didn't know any better. But when he came home and, and his parents would paint, paint a totally different picture of Stepinac. The Serbs continued to manipulate Stepinac to blacken Croatia. So this is as much about standing up for Croatia as it is about standing up for Stepinac. Because it is part of a wider and continuing slander campaign aimed at the Croatian people and state. So what did three individuals do about the lies and manipulation? that we heard from the Serbian government about Stupinac and Croatia during last summer. Like everyone else on Nicolaro's mailing list, I received an email from Vice Batrelo at the beginning of summer with a letter in Croatian demanding an apology from Serbian Foreign Minister Ivica Dacic for the lies that he was saying about Stupinac. And Vica was asking us all to sign it and to send it to the Serbian Embassy. I immediately translated it into English and sent it back to Vica and I told him my even if 8 million Croatians, 4 million Croatians in Croatia, 4 million diaspora, even if we all write to Dutch signing it and telling him he's a dirty liar, he's just going to laugh at us. So we then decided to write a letter in English to the people, both in the EU and around the world, who will be deciding on the future of Serbia. Vitsa gathered me and Dr. Harris so that together we would draft a letter in response to the Serbian lies and manipulation. We simply set out the facts. We took each slanderous accusation, and lie that the Serbs said, and refuted it with the facts and the truth. As Dr. Harris says in his book, which is dedicated to ensuring that the truth about Stepinac is known and acknowledged, the only antidote to lies, and few have been more lied about than Stepinac, is the truth. Dr. Harris sought to tell the truth in his book, which sets the record straight, and we wanted to do the same in our letter. The slanderous accusations include uh, that Carlos Stupinac was the leader of the genocidal NDH regime and a war criminal who gave genocide his blessing. So not only did they use uh, historical lies, but the Serbs also attributed words to Cardinal Stupinac, which he, which he never said. They claimed that Cardinal Stupinac praised the role of the Ustashi movement and of the Axis powers in his 1941 Easter sermon when he preached that the end of our was created by God's grace by the wise sacrificial work of the leader, Bogomik Ante Pavlic, and by the Ustashi movement, as well as by the will of our allies, Hitler and Mussolini. Dr. Harris found the documents evidencing that these were actually the words of a high-level officer of the Quisling Independent State of Croatia, the Indian H. Slavko Kvatin, in his statement proclaiming the establishment of the Indian Arm, 10th of April 1941. So the Serbs simply transposed Kvatin equals words to Stepinac. We then cited the actual text of Blessed Aloysius Stepinac's sermon on Easter Sunday, which was on the 13th of April 1941, which clearly contradicts the Serb claims. Stepinac's sermon is a call to peace, which he says is one of the most beautiful gifts of Jesus Christ. It laments the chaos of war and the sighs of the oppressed and the tears of the worn out and unfortunate. We sent our letter to our neighbouring countries, members of the Croatian government, Commission monitoring Serbia's negotiations with the EU, all foreign ambassadors uh, to Croatia, all members of the European Commission, all EU foreign ministers, the Council of Europe, and all members of the European Parliament, as well as leaders in the Western countries such as um, the US, Canada, and, and Australia. Did our letter produce any results? Did it have any impact at all? Well, you may recall the other night when um, the high-powered panel of, of lawyers and politicians here um, that, that uh, were, uh, Tradfest was telling us that um, they take on secular militants by passing legislation, etc. And uh, I got up and asked the question, 
And uh, I said, well, what can we as individuals do to fight the militants? And I jokingly said that it was not a rhetorical question. Several Bakhtulits responded by quoting Edmund Burke, who said that all that is needed for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. Well, firstly, uh, with our actions, we woke up some people, both in the Croatian government and in the church, who were enjoying the usual Croatian custom of nothing happening during July and August. Meanwhile, the Serbs were taking full advantage of the silence in Croatia. Foreign Minister Miro Kovac suddenly decided to act, and it was all on the basis of the documentation that Dr. Harris found and sent to the Foreign Ministry. We ended our letter by asking something of the recipients. We said, in our letter, we ask you and your colleagues to note these falsehoods and to be alert to any more which the Serbian campaign to delegitimize Croatia may involve in the future. We actually got a reply from Juncker, thanking us for our letter, and that he will reply in detail in due course. Many ambassadors acknowledged that I received our letter, particularly when I saw them in person, they said at various events and they promised to reply and respond, but they didn't, but that's because they're diplomats. But the fact that they read it and acknowledged it and um, mentioned it to me, that means that it was pretty effective. Shortly after we sent our letter, the Serbian Prime Minister, Alexander Vucic, he also wrote to Juncker, saying that Croatia was pursuing, quote, a blatant anti-Serb policy, which Serbia did not provoke in any way, except for expressing his disagreement with decisions in cases related to World War II Zagreb Archbishop Lozis Sapinac, Croatian Member of Parliament Baran Glavash and Barasic, underlining that Serbia could not accept the legacy of Nazism and support for terrorism. Juncker also replied to Vucic, saying that good neighbourly relations, regional cooperation and reconciliation were the basic principles that should be respected by all EU candidate countries, potential candidates and EU member countries. Serbian Foreign Minister Ivica Dacic was livid, saying that Juncker did not answer any of the concrete questions raised by Vucic, he did not comment on the rehabilitation of the fascist Ustasha regime, he did not even tell us what we did not do, maybe because they had done enough already. Dutch said that this could not, this cannot continue. We did not ask you about world peace, but about the anti serb policy of an EU member country which jeopardizes peace and stability in the region. Well, he actually contradicts himself because that is asking his opinion about peace and stability, which we could then gave him. So this um, cannot be just a coincidence. Clearly, Juncker did what we asked in our letter. He took note of the facts that we presented and a warning to be wary of any more lies in the Serbian campaign to delegitimize de Croatia, which he then received straight after our letter defending Stepinac from such Serbian government lies. So you see, individuals can make a difference. You're also making a difference by, by being here tonight and supporting Jalari's efforts. When you think that someone, when you think that something should be done about an injustice that you see or a lie that you hear, then do something about it. It's also wanted me to, um, to share what Stepinac means to me personally. Well, Stepinac was the last part of my life uh, as a Croatian and Catholic growing up in Australia, well, and ever since. There, is, there are three large Catholic parishes in Melbourne, and every year while I was still living there, there would be one big joint mass celebrating Stepinac on 10th of February, and uh, every year it would alternate between the different parishes. And this was well before Stepinac's beatification. These days, Mass is celebrated every 10th February by, Archbishop, by the Archbishop of Melbourne at St. Patrick's Cathedral in the centre of the city. And there is now a bust of Stepinac in front of the cathedral. I remember while I was travelling around Europe after I finished university, um, I stayed with an elderly um, couple in London who told me that they had personally signed a petition in the UK to free the Croatian Cardinal. I lived in Vienna before moving to Croatia and uh, an American priest, Father, Father Joseph Carolla, was celebrating Mass for the expat community. We became friends and I introduced him to Stepinac. And he actually came to Croatia and um, concelebrated Mass for the beatification. He later realized that he lived in the same house as, uh, that Stepinac lived in when he was in Rome. And Father Carolla has been a proponent of Stepinac ever since. I'd like to once again express my gratitude to Vitz and Dr. Harris for the opportunity to defend Stepinac. <coughs> Well, after all that he has done for me, I feel that um, my duty as a Croatian Catholic, and personally, I'm trying to sort of repay a sort of debt <coughs> to him. 
I would not be able to do what I've been doing in Croatia without my faith and devotion just to peanuts. I went, to, I went back to Australia to be with my dying father, and our last conversation was about the peanuts. I asked him if he would do me a favor, that when he gets to heaven, to ask the peanuts to help me out when I get back in Zagreb. His last words were, I will. Boom. Anyway, after I buried my dad and went back to Zagreb, I, I got probably the most highest paying job I, had, I ever had in my life. I bought a dilapidated house that was really falling apart, but it was literally on St. Mark's Square. Everybody laughed at me because of the wet one house thing. Australia and it's falling down, and, but I loved it because it was 300 years old, older than Australia, and next to St. Mark's, with, uh, which had the Hrvatsky built up on the roof. Anyway, when I eventually got the permits to, um, to renovate it after seven years, I discovered an 18th century fresco of the, whole, of the Holy Family under the old facade, and our tourists come around and, and take pictures of it, and, and now people ask me, how did you get this house? You know, um, Kostoi is a tepe. And I tell them, of course, stories are many. Thank you. <laughs>